So what, what we're thinking is there would be many uh, options for us for this mechanism for the future, but maybe KDGO is the only one we can put a name on at the moment. So it might end up being one of 10, one of 100, whatever. But I, I think it's also the one we will explore first because it's the most tangible, there's the most publicly available information about how it works and what it's done and, and so on. So if we follow the route that I'm thinking of, we would then write a paper sort of conceptual, separate from the other papers from BAMF, but, but also coming out in that same special issue. So it would have a, a length of uh, 3,000 words or less. Um, and um, that, that um, so we, 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 we would write such a paper and have, have it done on time, which, which might mean we had the first draft, let's say within the next six weeks. And, and um, then in the future, if all went well, you'd be a part of our meetings too. So the next meeting will be in Paris in two years. And in two more years, we're thinking we come back to Banff, although we're not certain about that. So that, that's kind of what I'm looking at, the idea of, of, of writing a paper now about conceptually how, how this might work. And yeah, Martin would, would, would be the other obvious sort of leader in this. Um, he and Candace uh, jointly were, were in charge of the program for the recently concluded meeting. Yeah, so that, that's my uh, proposal. We're generating consensus. Did we look at anybody else writing about generating consensus? The answer to that, I think, is quite, quite amusing. There's this book, which is now in its fourth edition, by Sam Kaner. And the first edition was 1996, there's one in 2022, and he's working on a new one for the 2030s. Uh, yeah, but we have always been consistently ahead of that book. And the first edition used terminology that none of you would like, including troublemakers in the solution. Isn't that awful? We've never had troublemakers in Banff, never ever. We've had Spirited discussants, you know, but <laughs> never troublemakers. So you may wonder about the two video cameras. What's the deal with that? Yeah? Why do we need two? They are remarkably different. And it, 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 it's sort of a metaphor for modern life. So Agnes was most often the person who got discussions unstuck. We 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 would be like working out something and the whole room was just like frozen. They didn't know what to do next and Agnes would say something and move us forward. Larry Hunsaker was also capable of doing that and so was Bob Cole. And do you think, Mark and uh, Kim, can we continue to do it the same way for the next 30 years? With, I think, regulatory bodies might be in the room is consensus sufficient to look to me the process is we generate consensus and then you have to go back and we do studies and we see whether it works and sometimes it works sometimes it did not work and then we correct so is this good enough or do we need different approaches well one one approach of course that, that it is a huge model is the fact that the NIH gave up consensus conferences. They gave that up a long time ago, and they can tell you all the reasons that people were craftily gaming the system and pretending to generate consensus where they knew where they, they, they were going. It was faked all, all the way through. And what the NIH said then, when people would come and say, you know, we, they, they would say, go to the transplant people. They know how to do it, you know, which I, I was very proud that that's what the NI, but it's not, but the world isn't as simple as that. Maybe they, they were right that there's something wrong with this general approach. Yes. I, I think that uh, the point that 
is brought up here is really, really important. And maybe we can learn something from KDGO. This is uh, uh, kidney disease improving global outcomes work. This is consensus. It is not everybody in the world coming and trying to agree, because I think if you have everybody from different realms, people who don't work in the field, people who are super involved in the field, they would be very difficult. But these are expert panels with a lot of homework before the meeting yep. coming together, and uh, they have funding. They're not funded by a grant agency. And the guidelines from KDGO are used as one way of having a basis of agreed upon optimal care for many things. It does not include pathology, but I think maybe we could learn from KDGO approaches to move forward with homework and selected questions and working groups from people who are particularly expert, and then the guidelines are put out for public opinion and come yeah. together so they're not just angry powers. So, so we look at that. You know, we, we have a strong affiliation with K. When it began, MKF Cyber, we, we were creating the entity that, that people looked at for them. And John Davis, when he stepped down as CEO of the National Kitty Foundation, became the leader of K. Digo, and he's still that. He's still actively running the organization. And it, it has functioned very well. So I know a lot about it. I have the utmost uh, respect for the way it functions, and I, I would agree that's well worth looking at as, as uh, something that we might take lessons from. We, what we now see is, is complexity, complexity that we hadn't anticipated. And the process of, uh, of, of a consensus meeting, well, this is not a consensus meeting, but it's a, the Banff process probably has reached the point where it cannot resolve the questions uh, in a in a way uh, in the way which we used to resolve them where you could reach an answer and then set that forth and then have it tested etc the complexity has now exceeded our ability to resolve things within our field so I, I see the bank now as a as a chance probably it's the best chance we have anywhere of getting a window on where our field is. But um, it may have exceeded its ability to resolve individual questions satisfactorily. Is that a fair assessment, Michael and Ben, or am I missing the point? Yeah, no, no, no. I think you nailed it, right? That came out of this meeting. So we need a different approach. Um, and Banff, at best, can be a custodian of the outcome of different approaches to have a better evidence based generation of diagnostic tools, right? So we can't, we can't, I made the proposal saying we reduce the MANF meeting that I meet with myself and make the classification and generate consensus. But um, that there was not a lot of support, right? Of having an N equal one consensus meeting. So we're, we're, we'll try to be more engaging for feedback on the classification with, with online consulting tools and things like this. But I think what you, when I listen to you, Phil, is we, we need to get away from opinion right? And saying, oh, in my experience, in my cohort, it's this and this, and therefore it should be that and that. It has to be a more structured evidence generation, more following regulatory authorities, principles, and guidances around this, right? And I agree, it cannot be just a group of experts looking at it at face value and saying it shall be. We need the, the tools of complex data analysis to help us with that, those decisions. A sea change in transplant pathology appears. A new plan for decision-making for the next 30 years. Complexity will be the death of us. Consensus can no longer handle the fuss. We can't have just anyone weighing in, and so expert panels will rise again. But not like the 1990s when there were all the rage. These better, sleeker expert panels can fully engage with AI, machine learning, and precision medicine faithfully, as well as the practice points of Marcello Tonelli, whose use of cool guideline methods technology can revitalize transplant pathology. 
Why should clinicians have all the fun? Transplant pathologists will not be outdone.